Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Just gonna dive right into this one today. So getting the cab in paint. So I just wanted to give a final walk around of the cab as it is uh, ready to be masked off for paint. I did go over a couple more areas with the seam sealer in areas that you're not gonna see. Um, specifically in these areas, uh, kind of worry about them a little bit. If I remember right, when I had this thing together before I disassembled everything, there was a substantial amount of seam sealer in some of these areas and I just wanted to hit them. Uh, if it needs it or not, again, don't care, you don't see it, I'd rather be safe than sorry on those areas. And here it is in its final stage ready for paint. I wanted to point out on these uh, drip rails up here, I did scuff them up a little bit with the uh, red scotch pad just because this has sat for about a week and uh, my paint finally showed up. So in that time, this kind of, it gets really hard. Um, the black stuff doesn't. The black stuff stays kind of, in a sense, what I described, sticky in a way to the touch. Um, I did scuff these up just, just to be safe, but uh, this is the one that I was concerned about because it had a really smooth appearance. So I did scuff this up just so there's no question it's gonna accept paint. But I'm just gonna kinda go over, finish with the walk around on this. And I would like to tell you guys from my personal experience, if there is something you're not happy with, fix it now before you paint it because I've had one or two vehicles that no one else can see something on it but me, I know it's there, and I know I should have fixed it before I painted it, and I just went ahead and did it anyway. So if there is something that you're not happy with, trust me, spend the extra time and just fix it before you put it in the paint. You'll be happier in the long run. So from what I said in the previous video, I am going to spray this in two different spray outs just because I thought about it and thought about it and while I really want to do it in one complete spray without a rotisserie I don't see it's going to be possible mainly because trying to do the inside here from the outside especially with this rocker panel stepping in and out and worrying about keeping my air hose clear I'm just going to end up screwing up the paint so Instead of taking that chance, I'm gonna do it in smaller sections. I'm going to do the inside separate from the outside, spraying the inside first and then masking off the outside. And this is gonna be my seam right here. So your paint line, you will never see it because the paint line will be hidden behind the weather stripping on the door jams, the windows front and rear. This is all gonna be basically my line. So. For this, I'm going to uh, mask from here down, out, I should say, on the whole thing and get the outside protected with uh, some masking tape and uh, some plastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and start masking this up for the inside spray and uh, come back after, uh, after that's done. Now, I will say that Definitely going to cover up all these holes, which I want to point out too. It's not a really big deal, but I did touch up all these holes in the firewall too. Um, just because as you can see, there was a little bit of filler there, about a millimeter or so thick. And uh, I just wanted to have a nice transition there. Um, you'll never see it again. It's going to be behind, obviously this is like behind the brake master cylinder and brake booster, but... I just wanted to have a nice smooth transition there so there's no uh, chances of paint chipping or having any chip outs that spread. So anyway, what I was gonna say is uh, I'm gonna mask off all this area here too, um, just so as I'm spraying, you don't have any contamination from inside to outside, kind of like what I did with the primer. So all these areas that go inside to outside of the cab, those will all be masked off as well just so there isn't any contamination um, from the prep body outside here because this is a perfectly smooth surface and I do not want to have it uh, contaminated.
One more thing I'm gonna point out before I get it masked up is there was only a few areas that had some uh, pinholes or little imperfections that I had to go over with uh, the 3M glazing compound there, which uh, is actually really good. So there's uh, there shouldn't be any more pinholes in this uh, that you're gonna visibly see. I obviously didn't worry about the firewall here um, just because, again, you won't see it. And I didn't worry too much about the interior part of it either. There might be a few there, but you're probably not gonna see them. I was more concerned about anywhere visible um, with the outside of paint, such as the A pillar, the B pillar, the uh, rocker panels, and specifically the roof, just because this truck is lowered and where it sits on my dolly, um, you can't really see the top of the roof, but it is going to be highly visible when it's on the truck because the truck is lowered and specifically like my height or a taller person, you're going to see everything on the top of the cap. Going to the 3M yellow tape for this, uh, I prefer the yellow tape for doing vehicles just because it sticks really well, but doesn't pull extremely hard. So you don't have to worry about pulling off paint, stuff like that. Um, and it does last for a couple weeks. So if you're like me and you're in between doing a few things or you're gonna be a week or so, two weeks between masking up and maybe spraying it, this stuff is great for that. I'm gonna point out one thing while masking. In an earlier video, I did say that sanding is the worst part of doing this. I still agree with that thought. I will say second worst is masking. Masking is one of the most tedious things that I hate to do, that uh, it's something you have to do, but it just sucks. I'm not one that likes to do masking either. All right, guys, I said I'd show you how I do my paint booths. This actually works out a little better in my shop here than uh, I did in my garage, just because it gives me more room. And it's a lot easier to set up because of the overhead stuff I have in here. So I've always do six sides. I have not done the floor yet, and I will do this opening in just a minute, but I do a uh, ceiling as well. I just want this thing as close to a clean room as I can get. And what I do is one side, I use the track for the garage door opener for the, where the spring mounts. And then I actually use the tracks for the garage door opener. And this is a high lift garage door that goes all the way up to the roof. So it's nice for that. And then I use some PVC extensions between the tracks and my hoist. So I just use the overhead bar on the hoist and it actually worked out pretty nice. Um, <clears throat> this is roughly two hours worth of taping and work and about $50 worth of materials, including the uh, duct tape. Um, mainly though, again, I like my shop clean. I don't want overspray on anything, specifically other projects, you know, that I'm working on or even my hoist. So not only do I tape the seams up, I also tape it to the floor. And then, uh, the overhead is also taped up. And again, I will come in here with some more two mil plastic and I'll lay down the floor too. So there's no overspray on the floor. <clears throat> and then over here in the window, I've got one of those 24 inch fans and I just slice a hole in my plastic and I'll take the fan up here, open the window, take the screen off the window and exhaust everything out through that window. Um, one thing about my garage that did work out a little better uh, is I could go a little bit bigger with the paint booth, just not quite so high. And the windows were closer together so I could actually have two fans if I wanted to. In here, I would have to have a pretty massive booth to be able to exhaust two fans out. But for doing something like the cab here, I found out one fan is enough. And even doing a car body like my Chevelle, one fan was enough. Um, if you're doing something bigger, like a whole spray out, I would say one fan's not enough. Uh, you get too much stuff accumulating in there and you probably wanna try and get two fans going out. So if you're doing a complete paint job on a whole vehicle, I would say two fans, at least two 24 inch fans. If you're just doing half a vehicle, base clear, one fan's enough. And I've got all the uh, tape lines on the cab, doors, windows, 
all the little tidbits masked off. So now I'm gonna lay my plastic over it and get this thing sealed up. This gives you guys an idea of how this uh, 3M masking works. Basically just unroll it across the center of the vehicle and then it's wide enough that this just unfolds out in about four different layers and will cover the whole uh, whole vehicle. Okay, so I screwed up and I forgot this is my roll of only 12 foot wide. So as you can see, I flipped it 90 degrees and went over the cab this way. And then now it's wide enough to do everywhere I need to to mask all the way to the bottom of the cab. Show you guys how I like to mask this up. I actually like to throw my plastic over and then what I do is I start on one edge and just cut it with a razor blade and cut my opening and then overlap my tape. And that's how I, uh, that's how I mask these off. It's the fastest, easiest way for me. Maybe, uh, maybe you guys have a faster, easier way, but that's how I do it. Okay, so I've got the first opening taped off, got three more to go, and then I'm going to tape off the bottom as well. Haven't mentioned it for a video or two, but if you guys are enjoying yourselves or you're liking the content, I sure would appreciate if you haven't already to hit that like and subscribe button. Just because I'd really like to get to 1,000 subscribers and get this channel monetized, then maybe I could uh, start bringing you guys a little bit better content. Anyway, more masking to go. Move on from here. All right, after a couple hours of masking on the cab and putting up my booth, the cab's ready to go in the booth, wipe it down with some wax and grease remover, tack cloth, and it is ready to paint. Here is the booth, finished up. And here is the inside. Now I know what you guys are thinking, you Dexter fans, but I promise, I really am using this for painting. Except for the fan, I don't have that in yet. So I'll cut this out, slice this open, tape my fan up, and it's ready for paint, so. That's what my paint booth looks like. Again, plastic everywhere. Keep as much dust out as possible. And from what I have noticed too, from doing this in the past, this, uh, this thin plastic here, it actually has some static on it for a day or two. Uh, I've never had one of these up longer than a couple of days, but at least for that long, it, uh, the static, actually helps track dust and small particles. So that actually helps keep, uh, keep it out of your paint. Well, I'm gonna wheel this in here and get started. Now let's discuss what I'm gonna be using. So for the sealer, I'm gonna be using the DP41LF activator with the DP90LF epoxy primer, reduced two to one to one of the DT885 reducer. For the base, Deltron DBC 9700 in black, reduced one to one half the DT80, excuse me, DT885 reducer. And then this is the DX57. Uh, I know you can't read it. I had to borrow this from a, a shop because mine didn't show up, but that is an activator for the base coat and you use very little of it. It's like 1.5 ounces to a mixed quart. So you don't use much of that. That just uh, helps eliminate any problems with the base sticking. And then for the clear, I'm gonna use a DCU 2021 and a DCX 61 hardener and a DT885 reducer. And this is mixed four to one to one. So you've got uh, four parts clear, one part hardener, one part reducer. Uh, hopefully you got all that, but that is gonna be my mix and spray out for the next uh, foreseeable future tonight. All right, here's what my Dexter room looks like all finished. Ready to start painting the cab. Cab's in here. Everything's been uh, hit with wax and grease remover. It's all dry. All I'm gonna do now is hit this with a tack cloth and then mix up my paints. 
I will say uh, in between paints, in between flash times, I do like to go lightly with a tack cloth just to pick up anything that may have gotten in the finish, you know, that's sitting on top of it before I go to the next step. Uh, some guys may or may not want to do that, but it's just an extra step I like to do just to keep as much stuff out of the paint as possible. And uh, fans in place. So next time you see this, hopefully it looks good. We'll find out. Here's a shot after one coat of sealer. I'm gonna denib a few little spots and then uh, on the base coat. That spot right there is just a little bit thicker and it just hasn't dried yet. The second shot is after three coats of black base, DVC 9700. So it ended up being a really late night, and by the time I got done, I didn't want to do anything but go to bed. But here it is the next day. And this is roughly four coats of clear. And this is the first time that I have used the PPG 2021 clear. And so far, I've got to say that it's pretty exceptional as far as it lays down really well and easily. I am by no means a professional at uh, spraying and it worked really well. The black is showing one uneven spot right there where the sun visors mount, but I'm not too worried about it. I think the brackets will hide that unevenness. It's one spot I did kind of miss when I was doing the body work. But other than that, I would say it turned out really well. Again, there is uh, so that right there is actually spot weld to the spot welds. I didn't really uh, do much body work on the dash panel here, but as you can see, it lays out really flat. So overall, um, I'd say I'm pretty happy with the results. Again, I'm really picky, especially about my own work. And so I would say, I'd probably give this eight, nine out of 10 as far as uh, how it looks. There's always room for improvement. And so I'll say, you know, that's why I don't rate that any higher, but it does look good. And again, never using this clear before, very happy with how it turned out. So I'm excited to back mask this and uh, get the outside sprayed and see how that looks. In between painting the cab inside and outside, I decided to paint the cowl section too, just because it's technically part of the cab. And as you guys may have watched in my short video, I learned a very valuable lesson for painting where I live in my paint booth in my shop. And that is don't paint after dark when the bugs come out. I already fixed two problems with this before I had my final problem and it turned out really well, except for when I came back about 2.30 in the morning to see how it dried. This little bastard had to screw it up. The little speckling is just dust. That's not stuff in the paint. The, this camera is just picking up everything, which is good, but uh, that is not supposed to be there. And I think I'll be okay because, well, you can't see on the picture, but it's actually on the top layer of clear. And I've got a lot of clear on this, so I can probably buff it out. It's just not supposed to be there, and I wasn't happy. Here's a final shot of the cab before I back mask it and put it back in the booth. Again, it turned out really well. 
I didn't do a lot of body work on this one. Mainly body work was across the, uh, the back right here and the lower panel where there was some gun racks in it and they had basically indented in the sheet metal. So I had to do some, uh, some repair for that. I want to get those flat, but it turned out good. Um, I will say this black is about the blackest, deepest black I could find, which is exactly what I wanted. I love my vehicles in black and this is what I wanted. I will say though, as far as spraying it, it's actually kind of hard because when I try to inspect stuff with a light, it absorbs so much light that it's kind of actually hard to see. It's kind of hard to put that into words and explain it to you without seeing it for yourself. But I like to go over things with the light and make sure I didn't miss anything as far as, do I have enough base on here? Do I have enough clear on specifically? And is it layered well? And it's hard to see sometimes because the black absorbs so much of my light. All right, got the cab back mask now, and it's in the paint booth for the final time. Already hit it with wax and grease remover. I'm gonna go mix up my paint and then come back here with tack cloth and hit it with the tack cloth to hopefully get all the dust off of it. And then start spraying my sealer. Here it is after the final coats of clear. This is actually about two hours after the final spraying of the clear and it's pretty dry. I'm gonna pull the masking off right now. It's got one coat of uh, sealer, two coats of base and three heavy coats of clear. Overall, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna uh, get it out of the booth when it's uh, fully dry and then I'm gonna go over with you guys. There are a couple of issues, but nothing that I don't think can't be fixed. Finally, the cab is painted. Overall, looks really good. There are a couple of small issues, again, which uh, I'll show you guys. And this comes from uh, my lack of experience with painting, as well as not having a professional paint booth to paint in. But overall, it turned out quite well. I do plan on cut and buffing this uh, when it hardens a little bit. There's a shot of the, uh, the back panel that I was worried about. I can see one slight ripple in it, but I can live with it. I think it looks pretty good. And this back piece right here turned out really nice as well. And this rocker turned out really well. Again, looks, uh, looks pretty good. Overall, I'm quite pleased with it. Now we'll show you guys the mistakes. Maybe it's just me that's unlucky with painting, but I had one small gnat land right there put a couple of coats of clear over top of it. Hope it'll cut out. I'm not too worried about that just because the cat, or excuse me, the bed where it sits against the cab is about from here down. So it will probably hide that. So I'm not really worried about that even though it did piss me off. And then got this guy that showed up right here after I left the booth. 
And obviously I must have got too much paint into the channel there. And I ended up with uh, a run right there and a one right there. So I must have got a little bit too much clear on this side. I'm not too worried about those. Those I can cut out and buff those and you will never see them. Where this is quite thick though, I'm definitely gonna let that harden for about a week before I cut it and buff it. Just because when I tried doing runs like that on a similar project after just a couple of days, they were too soft and it didn't turn out very good. So I'm gonna let those harden up before I mess with them. Here's a shot of the top. And after two coats of clear, I thought it was gonna turn out like glass, but I was mistaken. There's a few little spots right there. Hope you guys can see that on the camera. And there's a little one right there as well. Where these happened late, I think those will cut out as well. On the top, because it's flat, I laid down an exceptional thick amount of clear. So I think that those will, uh, will cut out. Overall, the top panel looks pretty good though. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell this or not, but this channel where the body seam is, was actually pretty, kind of had a, a good little a divot when I uh, finished the body work and brought this into paint. So I don't know if it shows on camera as much as in person, but it's filled in quite a bit with clear. So that'll give, gives me an idea at least of how much clear I've actually got on the top. So I should be able to buff this out with no problem on the top with those imperfections. And after all the sheet metal work to fill the firewall, it turned out really nice and flat as well. Even though it's under the hood, you're not gonna really see this a lot. And it still looks pretty good. So, there you have it everybody. Cab is painted. And overall, I think it looks pretty good. Pretty happy with it. I'm not ecstatic jumping up and down for joy because there's a, there's always improvement and there could have been a, a few less issues with this one, but I think I'll take it. I think I'll move forward from here. All right, everybody, there you have it. The cab is in final paint. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Thanks again for watching, you guys. There'll be more videos to come on this project and more projects in the future. As always, till then, thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.